So now I'm going to show you how you prepare uh, your fluids for your patient. This is something that you can have your assistant do. You do just need to make sure that you um, are detailed in your instructions, i.e. tell them what size bag to pick for the patient and which line they should be picking. Um, if they've never spiked a bag before, which is what we call it when we attach the primary set to the bag, um, then go ahead and give them some instruction on how to do that. So for our patient, he's 7.2 kilograms, so I've chosen a 500 milliliter bag of LRS. Um, under 20 pounds, which is our limit um, for which line we should pick. So I chose a micro line. The fluids and fluid lines are down in this cabinet right here. So I have a micro line right here, and the difference is how many drops it takes to equal a milliliter. And you can see right here, if you just look for the little drop icon, it tells you. So a standard line for patients over 20 pounds is 15 milliliters, um, I'm, excuse me, 15 drops per milliliter, so larger drops. And then on our micro, it's 60 drops to create one milliliter, so smaller drops. Another way you can tell if you already have a line on a bag is if you look in the viewfinder, you can see that the micro has this little needle pointing down, whereas my macro or my standard does not. So this one's gonna make bigger drops than this one. So this is a micro line, 60 drops per milliliter. So, what I wanna do, I've already taken one tab off to, um, because I drew up my flushes from here, which we have in another video, um, in another basket prep video. So I'm gonna pull off this one. Some of them, some of them are the same on some bags. Some bags have an obvious port for a line and a separate injection port, so you just need to see what you've got. But these look exactly the same, so I know that I could do either or on any side. So the best way to properly spike a bag, you may have heard about the dreaded air bubbles and the bleeding for hours in order to get the air bubbles out. Uh, my little trick is I take my either my toggle or this little pinch and I pinch the line right at the end of the viewfinder. This is gonna ensure none of this air that's in here goes down into my line. I take my bag, I'm gonna lay it down. You wanna keep this clean once you take this top off. This is all sterile. This can take a little bit of force, don't be afraid. You wanna butt it all the way up though. So now that I've butted it all the way up, I'm gonna hold it up like this. And again, I have all this air. If I open this, I'm just gonna get air in my line. So I'm gonna squeeze my viewfinder and I'm gonna fill it up a little bit. Halfway is plenty, do a little bit more. Okay, so now, before I open it, I'm gonna hang it up so I don't accidentally get air. All those bubbles are gone. Um, sometimes you don't have to undo this, sometimes you do. If you do, just keep it clean. And now I'm going to release. And the only bubbles I'm gonna get are right here at the very end versus a whole bunch of bubbles just flowing through. So this is what we call bleeding the line. So I'm filling the line with fluid so that we don't put any air into our patient. That's why we wanna get rid of all the bubbles. Once I'm happy that it's bubble free, I'll go ahead and use my toggle and clamp it down and then keep this all nice and clean and sterile. The next thing we wanna do, just as with any drug or anything that we administer, a patient fluids are the same. We wanna make sure they're labeled appropriately for the patient. So I've got myself a piece of tape here. Um, it's up to you. Ideally, the most important is just that there is a piece of tape with the animal's name and the date on this bag. So we know when it was punctured and who it was punctured for. Uh, you'll notice I'm using tape and not writing directly on the bag with Sharpie and that's because the Sharpie can actually bleed into the fluids. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and write my patient's name on here, it's Pepper. But a little trick that I like to do, this is just helpful if you ever work anywhere where pumps are scarce um, or you worry about power outages and you might not be able to rely on the pump to tell you how much fluid your patient have gotten. Um, I'm on the opposite end of my meter right here and I'm gonna put the tape up to the edge, make sure I'm meeting where the fluids actually start, all the way down to the bottom. Then what I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna actually mark where the fluids were when I started. 
So I'm just drawing a line on my tape where the fluids are, and then I'll write today's date. Nine, three. And again, this way, if for some reason, maybe we were doing a drip rate and we weren't using the pump or our pump failed on us, we could actually just look here and see where we started. This is a good trick for animals that are going to be staying hospitalized for a little while, uh, maybe a couple days. All right, that's fluid.